What's going on everyone? You're back with Jono for another quick math lesson. Today we're going to work out how to find the perimeter of sectors or sections of a circle that's not the entire way around or one of the semicircles that we looked at in the last lesson. The first thing we've got to ask ourselves is what is a sector? It really makes quite a lot of sense. It's just any part of a circle that's been cut out. So if you think about it like a pizza slice, if I cut this thing out, that is a section of the circle. So what's really important to know is if I took this black bit away, the remaining blue bit is still a sector, even though it's the majority of the circle. We actually call this bit the major sector, and the black bit that we colored in to start off is called the minor sector. Just making sure we know that both of these are sectors, even though they look different, is really important. So as long as we know three facts about circles, we're gonna do these easy as. We have to know that the radius is always the same, from the center out to a section of the circle. This is gonna become really helpful when we look at our perimeter questions. The second thing we need to know is what is the circumference formula, or two pi r, pretty easy. And finally, the key bit of information for this is we need to know that a circle has 360 degrees. So if we had a look at this, I've got two sectors drawn onto a circle, and I want you to tell me what is the difference between the two. The first thing we've got to recognize is that the radius can't be different for either of these sectors. It must be the exact same because that's the definition of a radius. So the only difference between these two sections is the length of the circumference on the outside. You can tell me quite obviously it would take longer to walk around the blue section than it would the black section. So the reason that the circumference is longer in the blue section is because the angle at the radius where those two arms meet, that angle is larger, so that means that the circumference is larger as well. For the black section, it's a lot smaller of an angle, so that means the circumference must be smaller as well. I'm taking up less of the circle, and I can represent that from the angle in the center. So one way to think about it is that the black section in this example could be taking up 30 degrees out of the possible 360 degrees. Right, it's only a small fraction of it, so that makes sense. It's not the whole thing, just a little piece. The blue section could be taking up a larger section of this circle as well. We know it's gonna be less than 180, but it could be something like 120 degrees of the 360 degrees that there are. If we're taking these two sentences and putting them into mathematical language, we could say that the first black section is taking 30 out of 360 and write that as a fraction. So 30 over 360 and the blue section is 120 over 360. We've got a part divided by the whole to tell us how much we've actually got. So because of this, the formula to find the perimeter of a sector is we need to work out how much of the circumference we've got and then add on the two radii afterwards. So all we've got to do is take the angle that we're given divided by 360, which tells us the size of the sector, multiplied by the circumference, because that's gonna be the same the whole way around, and we've already adjusted for how much of it we have, and then we have to add the 2R at the end. So if I have a look at this example here, I've got a 40 degrees out of the whole 360, and I've been given the radius. So the degrees that I've got, or the section of the sector that I've got, is 40 divided by 360. And then to find out the circumference, I need to multiply it by 2 pi r, or in this case, 2 pi times 18. That takes away the curved section, but I have to remember those two radii in order to get the whole way around. So I've got to add 18 plus 18 to finish this question off. If I type that in my calculator, I get the answer of 48.57 centimeters, and this kind of makes sense. The two 18s would be 36, and because I've got a pretty small section, I know that that curve bit isn't going to be too far. And that's all we've got to do for this topic. As long as you can see how big the section is, and then add the radii after, you're happy days. We could also see sectors like this. Just remember, because it's the major sector, that doesn't change anything. We've got 300 out of a total 360 degrees of this circle, so a little bit's cut out, and I know that the radius is equal to seven. So because I've got 300 over 360, that's the start of my equation, and then I multiply that by the circumference, or two pi multiplied by seven. Finally, I do still have to add on those two sevens, so seven plus seven, 
And that's my final answer. So if I throw this into the calculator, I get the answer of 50.65, which again, probably makes sense. The two sevens in this one would equal 14 meters. And because it's the such a large section of the circle, it makes sense that the answer is a lot bigger than those two radii added together. So we know that we're probably on the right track. So for this, the only thing I want you to ask yourself before you dive into one of these questions is how much of the circle do I actually have? Once you can work that out from the degrees in the middle, the rest of it is exactly the same as what we've done before. I hope you guys found this helpful and I'll see you later.